And in this video, I'm gonna show you my favorite tool in Lightroom, and that is the graduation filter. And it's got a myriad of possibilities. And in this video, I'm gonna go through my favorite. Morning everybody, fantastic to see you all again. So I've been meaning to talk about this tool in Lightroom for ages now, but I've been out on location a lot more recently. So I've not been spending as much time in the studio. I've been doing some videos on location, uh, but this week I've got a little bit of time. So I just want to do a fairly quick video just on the tool, which is the gradient filter. Now everyone's gonna think, oh, that's boring, but there are so many things that you can do with a gradient filter in Lightroom, which means quite often that I don't have to go into Photoshop and I prefer editing my photos in Lightroom. So let's go straight into this tool and I've got quite a few different examples of how I'd use it. And wait till the end, because there's a really, really useful one that I wanna show you. And if you like this video, also give it a thumbs up. I massively appreciate it. Okay, so let's get into this. So the first photo is this photo here. And um, just so if you don't know, this is the gradient filter, this button here, you can click it and you get options that you can then apply by applying a filter to the image. So for instance, in this one here, I'm just gonna select this part of the image. And if I hover over this, you can see it's just selected this bottom part of the image. And then if I want to, I can go and make changes to it, lighter, darker, etc. But the clever thing that you can do is that you can select things like colors. Uh, so for instance, in this one, if I wanted to just make the green a little bit greener and make it pop a little bit more, I can just click color um, and I can click the little picker here and I can just say, I'm just gonna pick this green here. Now you can also do it like that as well. So you can do a, a selection of colors, but I'm just gonna click a green here, put it back, click O, and you can see now that the greens in the image are selected. Um, and then I've got all these tools here to apply to those greens. So I can make the, them darker. I could just make them increase the exposure of them a little bit. I can make them more green, which is one of the things that I want to do. Make them a little bit maybe warmer as well. And it just gives you a little bit finer control over the colors rather than using a tool like the HSL uh, sliders here. So that's the first one, really easy to do. Let's get on to the next one, which is the most obvious really, which is darkening the sky. Um, so we've got a really simple photo here and I maybe just want to darken the sky here. So I can just select this. It's gonna do a graduated filter from no filter to 100% filter there. And I could just simply just darken it. Now what I like to do when I'm doing that is I darken the sky, but then I also apply another one further up to darken it a little bit higher up because I feel that just adds something a little bit special to, to the image. Now you can obviously do this to taste um, and, and to the conditions. I also tend to change the temperature a little bit of this higher up one as well. Maybe I just wanna warm up the clouds a little bit higher up. And you can see that it's super easy to be able to apply those graduated filters and create really amazing photos that were fairly dull before. So we've gone from, you know, this to this with this graduated filter. Okay, so going on to the next thing that I do, and that is just using luminance masks with these graduated filters. And I do that quite a lot on the sky. So for instance, this one, um, this is a, a shot I took in, this is a shot I took on the Isle of Sky. I think this is towards Harris actually. And I could do a graduated filter here because I might want to just darken the top part of the sky. But if I darkened it, I'd also be darken, darkening this cloud here. But you can also, because you're, you've got access to all these tools, you can darken just parts of it. So I could just say, just darken the blacks. And you can do that this way by just going black like that. Or I can use a range mask and lose a luminance and say, okay, I don't wanna darken the light. So I'm just gonna click O here. So this will deselect the light areas of the image. And then I can just change the exposure and change the exposure of these dark areas. That means that rather than just using the blacks to do it, I've then got access to all these tools on these dark tones. So maybe I wanna make these a little bit warmer or cooler. Uh, and it's just so powerful. It just is so good. You can do so much with it. Okay, 
So let's go on to a shot like this where you think, well, there's just no point in using a graduated filter on this. But you'd be wrong because I always use graduated filters on my woodland shots. So for instance, this shot, which is called Two Tribes, which is a shot from my book Woodlands, which is still available. I need a copy to show you, but I haven't got one, which is bad, never mind. Um, but anyway, this was a shot from my book Woodlands, and I've just knocked off the filter that I applied to it, which was a graduated filter, and I've just applied it from the bottom here because I want it to apply to these light tones in the image. And the way I do that is rather than just using the luminance mask, I use the color mask and just select here, which is the lighter tones in the image. And what it's gonna do then, if I just put that back, as you can see, it's selected all the light areas. But then I can also control that a bit. So what I can do here is I can just reduce that a little bit so it doesn't change the trunks of the trees too much, but changes the background. And then when I've done that, I can then, what I want to do here is just warm up the tones in that background light area. And you can see that that's just creating such a nice glow in the back of the image. It's so powerful, this graduated tool for doing things like this and making your woodland photos just have that sort of extra special um, element to them. So for instance, in this shot, um, another thing you can do with the graduated filter is um, this shot, I want to brighten up and almost make it a little bit more foggy. Um, and I did this in, in an image in my book. So the way to do that is probably I could just increase the exposure a little bit, but I don't want it to increase the exposure of the whites in the image because then it just goes a bit flat and I, I don't like that. So the, the way you can do that is if I just choose a graduated filter and just put it from say here down, it's just selecting these areas and then do a luminance mask, I'll show the mask. And then what I can do is say, just don't select the brighter areas. And you can see now it's just selecting the darker areas in here. I can change the amount of that, which is how harsh it is, 50 is about right. And then if I increase the exposure on these now, you can see that I've got that sort of more ethereal look to the image without blowing out the whites in the image. So, then what I might want to do is I might just want to do something to this area because it's blowing out a bit much. But when we get to the end, I'll come back to this image and I'll show you what you can do there. Okay, onto the next one, which is changing color temperatures. This is so important. Um, and I do this all the time as well. This is a great image. I talked about it a few years ago now, but I want to re-explain it. I'll, sh I'll link to the video where I, talk I, I showed uh, about editing it in detail here. I'll link to the video here. Um, so here, this bottom area, I wanted to make bluer. And it's just as simple as creating a um, gradient mask. And then I can just reduce the color of it. And I can really add some coldness into that. It was this frosty morning. I wanted to show that. Super easy to do. A gradient mask is just such a good way of doing it. One of the things that people often um, struggle with when they're in the field and they're using a graduated filter is if that graduated filter goes over a hill, then it darkens the hill. So usually if you're in the field and you're using a graduated filter, it would go a little bit like this. You would put the graduated filter on your camera, it'd look a bit like this. And I would, maybe you put it about there and I'd darken it, darken it down, maybe it's a six stop. And the problem is that it darkens this mountain down. And it does the same, obviously, when you do it in Lightroom as well. Unless you use this really clever feature, which is um, the brush and brushing away elements. Now, there's two ways to do this. You could use the brush, click Erase here, and then I could just erase it off. But the problem is if I do that, so if I do that here, you'll see that I erase it off the sky as well. So it's not great, really. If I look at the, the filter, I've, I've created this sort of halo around the mountain, which is not what you want. So you think, ah, oh, probably going to have to do this in Photoshop. However, there's a really simple tool. If I just reduce my brush a little bit, you just have to click the um, square bracket, uh, the left square bracket on, on the keyboard to do that. So I'm just going to reduce it to about this size. And then all I have to do is click auto mask. And once I've got that mask, I, I can just do this really clever thing, which is all I need to do is make sure that I click somewhere that is similar to the luminosity level and color level of this particular mountain here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click about here and I can just quite happily just delete this mask and you can see that it is sticking to the 
curvature and the shape of that mountain. So now I've got a real nice mask that's perfectly matched to that mountain and I can then just change the luminosity levels of the sky to exactly what I want. The cleverest bit is if I just leave that mask on, when I move this up and down, it stays there. So I can then alter my graduated filter and it keeps that masking around the mountain. It's so clever, I use this all the time. And you can do it on really you know, intricate things like this. So this is a perfect example of where, I've used this already, but I can do it again. So let's just zoom into 100% so we can see it um, you know, quite accurately. I'm just gonna create a mask here and obviously if I do that, it masks everything. And the problem is that then when I darken it, it's gonna darken these sea stacks. But if I just use the uh, brush tool and the erase tool, I can then just make sure it's set to auto mask. And you don't have to be that careful. I can just basically just get rid of it like this and it's going to keep a really nice edge to this sea stack here. Even that bird on top there is perfectly masked. I can now change that and I've got a perfectly masked sea stack. It is so powerful that and you can do the same for this. So if I wanted to I could go into this and I could think, okay, I want to brush and erase this down here. So if I just click auto mask, look at the mask, make sure I click on the green and I can just get rid of that on this bank here because I don't want it to lighten that bank. And um, that's it. I might want to just do it a little bit further across there, but you can see just how useful that is. So the graduated filter, the graduated mask is so, so good and really can help your photography. So give it a try, try all the things that I've done there. I'm sure it really help your images. And if you've got any other tips or top tips with Lightroom using that mask, put them in the comments below and it'd be really useful to everybody. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this shorter video and until next Sunday, bye.